What's up, y'all? This is your host, Hussein Nasser from IGM3, where we discuss software engineering by example. In this video, we will learn how to spin up a Postgres SQL database and PG admin that accompany, combine this, which usually used to manage this uh, Postgres database. You can create tables, look at the databases, and all that stuff in Docker containers, right? So Docker is really the best and easiest way to practice and develop and learn right uh, against these docker containers right instead of worrying about downloading and installing and configuring and databases on your machine and you have to worry about certain versions and disk space and all that stuff right all i have to do is like you can quickly spin up a docker container that contains your database that you want to test with right test with it against it and then whenever you're done you just just stop the container and delete the container and you're done right so that's the, the that's the really cool thing about docker right and i talked about the what what docker actually is and difference between a docker and a vm and a physical machine and kubernetes i talked about it in another video i'm gonna reference that below with that said right uh let's just jump into the video okay I'm going to use this video as a reference for our other coding series where we're going to use a database, right? Like whenever we own a database, we can't just wait and install it, right? Just spin up a Docker container and try uh, start writing code, right? So I'm going to use this video a lot as a reference to start referencing uh, my, my other coding series whenever we want to write Python against Postgres or JavaScript against Postgres. I'm going to spin up a Docker container. So I, I wanted to make a permanent video uh, to show how you can guys uh, spin up a Docker container with Postgres and PG admin. You can do your stuff. So let's just jump into it. So the first step here is to install Docker, right? I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go through it because it's very simple, right? You go to docker.com, download that. If you're on Windows or Mac, you just go through the installation process, all right? And in, in this case, I am actually using Mac, right? And you're going to see that I have Docker desktop running. Whenever you have that, you're pretty much done. You're ready to start uh, spinning up all kind of cool software using Docker containers. So let's spin up a, a Postgres database. So you're gonna open your the terminal window and let's zoom in a little bit here so you can see and in that terminal window I'm gonna write docker run and then I want to write Postgres so these are the three words that you need in order to spin up uh, Postgres in this uh, container and that will download the image you will need an internet connection to download the image for the first time I have the image already done right so it's gonna be faster than your uh, probably right so you can do that and it will run but before I want to do that I want actually since Postgres is a database right if you want to listen to a port right but Postgres listen by default in port 5432 right and in order to listen to that port you need to actually expose that port to your host okay and in order to do that you will use the slash p for port okay and then i'm going to expose the same exact port 5432 that's my host port and that's the container port Five. This is like kind of a mapping. So this means that hey, when you, when you spin up a Docker container, it will spin up on this port, right? Five, four, three, two, all the time, right? But what port do you want to map it in the uh, the host, which is my machine, which is my Mac in this case, right? And for fun, I am going to give this container a name. You don't have to. It's gonna assign it a random name, like Sleazy Joe, whatever. Right, but I'm gonna give it a really name, just like called PG. Okay, and let's hit enter. Let's see what happens. Woo! And database is ready and to accept connections. How simple and cool is that, guys? Right, this is really cool. 
right? In your case, it might take slightly more time. The reason is uh, probably it's gonna download the image, gonna do all that stuff. Obviously, we don't have a way to test that database, right? Uh, unless we write some code, but to do that, I'm going to spin up another Docker container that have PG admin. And if you're familiar with Postgres, PG admin is actually the administrator interface that uh, administer, if you will, the Postgres databases. And it's a web server, essentially. So it, again, listens to a port. And uh, to do that, it's going to be a, like a mini web server we're listening to a port, we'll have a web application that manages nicely, that manages your Postgres database. So let's go ahead and spin up a, da, 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 a Postgres, no, a PG Admin. Okay. Uh, PG Admin is managed by, I think, David Page, right? Uh, that's the official, that's the, uh, that's the official repo that I found, actually. And to do that, again, Docker run only if I can spin docker right and since obviously we're gonna spin it on a port pg admin this is the knowledge right you have to know pg admin runs on port 80 that particular uh, image that we're gonna run in, runs on port 80 so I can map it to port 80 right but I don't want to do that because port 80 is already in use here I'm using it for nginx so I'm gonna port just literally any other port right I'm gonna use Five, 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 five. Yeah. And after we do that, another requirement here is let's let's write the name of the container, PG admin. Again, this this part is completely optional. But it's cool to have, like so you can do Docker start PG admin, Docker stop PG admin. Like okay, it's, it's it's cool to have a name for your container. Otherwise you get a sleazy Joe, sleazy uh, Arthur, whatever. Uh, okay, the name of the image is dpage pg admin 4. Okay, that is almost we're almost there. Okay, so we have Docker run, right? We have the port 555 mapping to port 80. We have the name and we have the dpage slash pg admin 4. What we need to do is actually the requirement is since it's a web server, since it's a, it's actually an application, so there is a credential, default credential. There are obviously you have to put this default credential as an environment variable. And to do that, you're gonna use slash e, not slash dash e as an environment variable. And the environment variable in this case is literally pgadmin underscore default underscore we are out of line underscore email okay and although it says email you don't have to have an email you're just like I'm gonna name it Hussein that works right it's it's not really it doesn't have to be an email per se and then I'm gonna add another environment variable dash e you have to do that and then pg admin underscore default underscore password okay Hopefully easy to remember. My password is so secure, it's called password. Okay? And I think that is all we need. And then just like that, we are running on port 5555, mapping to port 80, and let's... Okay, so now I have Postgres running, and I have PG admin running. So how to test PG admin since it's a web application? Your browser is your friend, right? Unfortunately, you cannot hit the the Postgres database directly from the browser, right? Because it's, it's TCP. So I'm gonna do Hussein Mac. That's my machine name. And then guess what? It was five 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 five. And just like that, we're gonna be prompted with the email and password, which was the environment variable that we provided, which was. We tricked it, just Hussein, and the infamous password. And then login, we have a blank slate of nothingness, right? We have the beautiful PG admin. We don't have any servers. So how can we connect to our... If only we have a database that we can connect to. Oh, we actually do, sir. We do. Where is it listening? It's listening on port... 
five, four, three, two. I can change that, by the way. Right, we're going to show you in a, in a minute. That's the beauty of this. We're going to spin up another database on another port. But let's add the first one first. I'm going to name this MyDB1. Okay. Uh, let's go. Yeah, my my PGDB Docker, whatever. You can call whatever you want. This is just the name. The host. The host is... Jose Mac, that's the machine name, right? And the port is, happened to be the same 5432, remember we mapped 5432 to 5432. And the default password is Postgres and Postgres, okay? And then you go ahead and you connect it. And then you can do all sorts of cool things. By default, Postgres, Postgres, you can start creating a database, right? DB, I just create a database, why not? You can create tables and all, all sort of cool things. Let's create another instance, guys, before we end this video. Uh, so I'm gonna do docker run uh, dash p 5431, really, mapping to 5432, which is the port that is the database port right the postgres database port and i am going to name it pg2 the instance 2 and i am postgres i think that's it i think that's it that will spin up another database how simple is that guys if if you if you if you don't want to use your containers you have to install it twice there is no way you can install well i'm lying you can actually install two postgres in the same machine we have to configure for different port but it's it's really really tedious right but this you can just stop a container start another container it's just so simple right so i'm gonna create another server uh, docker 2 uh, what's the host name same host name but the port is 5431 can i connect sir can i connect oh we are connected right it's a blank slate there is not a single there's one database right and the other one has two databases all right guys i think that is it for me today we're going to use this uh, video and we're going to take it to the next level right we're gonna use this video to always reference this video to uh, spin up a how to spin up a postgres uh, database because we, while we're gonna do our coding series we're gonna build show your shorteners and and games and and uh, Twitter and so many other cool things in this channel we will at one point we need a databases right and i don't want to spend time to show you hey this is how we build database so that's why i built this video just dedicated to how to build a database postgres in general maybe i'll, I'll do another one for my sequel leave a comment below hit that like button subscribe to this channel if you want to become a better software engineer we discuss all kind of software engineering goodiness in this channel see you on the next one you guys stay awesome